came on because I need to talk and vent and it's easiest to do it on camera. I don't know why, I just, I like to do it so I can get through my thoughts and right now, I'm just, I don't know what to think, but I always keep getting texts from people and I changed my cell number so I thought that would make it so that it would stop and it kind of defeated the purpose seeing as now I keep getting them and yeah they want me to open links which I'm not going to do I'm not stupid like I ignorant like I used to be um my husband and I were talking about why a certain person is the way he is and I've come to realize it's because of how how I used to be with him you know and I think that he started liking that about me when I was young and naive and I just didn't understand <laughs> the ways of the world and I just did whatever he told me. So I guess I made a monster out of him. And I don't know how to stop it. I don't know if the links he would go to. I know that he watches my stuff. I don't have 100% proof, but I know. I'm sure he still does. And I'm sure he's on all my different stuff. I just, he's just not himself. But I mean, I know to everybody, this probably seems like I'm the one that has the issues, but if you knew him like I do, you wouldn't think that way. And it's something that it's like an inside thing. You know, when you know somebody that well, and you just, you know it's them. You know, you don't have that 100% maybe proof that you have to have in a court of law. But you just know. And he knows. And he knows that he gets to your head. And he likes doing that. And I know I shouldn't let it bother me. I know I should be the better person, but it does bother me because I thought I knew him and it, it really, it really gets to me. <clears throat> because you think you know somebody for like years and that they're this person that you thought they were and then you realize that maybe they were somebody you didn't even know they were and <clears throat> one time he wrote me that I was the only one that he could feel like he could be himself with but I don't know if that was true or not. I don't know if this is who he is or if he is who he is with everybody else. He's Mr. Charming and Perfect, you know. Or if he's really this mean person that he treats me like. Because he likes to hurt me. That's his favorite thing to do. Is to play with my emotions. And even Isaac said that. That's probably all he really liked about me. When we were younger. Was that he could hurt me. And mess with my emotion. And that I would cry. And get all up and down. And that he could control me. And 
he was so obsessive. He was really bad. Like, I didn't realize how, how much he, he just, every day he had to hear from me and I didn't realize that he even cared that I wrote. I mean, to me, it was something. It meant something. I thought we were at least friends. And to him, I don't know. To this day, I don't know what it ever meant to him. But I mean, in some ways, Isaac's got a point, too. Maybe he just wanted to control me. And I was this passive little little kitten and he was the prey and I I love to please people I was such a people pleaser back then I can't believe how much how much of a doormat I was it's ridiculous to think I stayed in that trap you know in your mind you're trapped and I was there for so long inside myself and so many people got on me about that, used me and threw me away. That's how it is. When you're this little petite five foot female, back then I was under five foot, but you know, I was small and passive, and that's all that mattered. Maybe in the end, that's all it was about. And now I'm trying to be somewhat self-assertive and not just be this little petite person that just does what people say. I still care. Don't get me wrong, people's opinions still matter to me. I don't think they ever will not matter. I'm not a sociopath. I wish in some ways I could be, but you know, I care about people too much. And even when they hurt me and do me wrong, I still care. I think it's my curse. It's definitely a curse to care in this world because most people don't, you know, they don't care about other people's lives. Other people wouldn't matter. But to me, I, I don't know. I just always cared about other people just as much as myself. And, you know, you see somebody sad or hurting and it does something to you and that's how come I cry at movies so much. Yeah. Yeah, I even cry at movies, people. <laughs> like, I'm that pathetic. Like, I'll be crying and Isaac will look back and be like, are you okay? And I'm like, no. And I, like, feel just as bad as the character in the movie. It's real sad. That's my life. Story of my life. This little girl right here. But, yeah, I used to have a better relationship with him. I think that, I don't know, maybe he did want to be that way with me. But he just couldn't, he couldn't put his ego aside and stand up for me. And he couldn't. He couldn't be who I needed him to be when I was younger. And I know he was younger too. We were high school kids, both in a situation where <laughs> it probably would have been really awkward for a lot of people and I didn't like that road. I always went the least resistance type. So I was okay with just being his online lover, you know? I don't think we really were lovers ever, but, you know, we were friends. 
We wrote each other as if we might as well have been. I mean, we didn't write lovey-dovey ways. He was that type that I could feel like I could confide in, though. He knew about my abuse and cared, or I thought he did. I thought he really cared. I thought he, I meant something to him. As many times as he he would talk to me, I, I don't know. I just... I believed when people told me something, you know, when someone says something to me, it actually affects me and he helped me to overcome some of those feelings back then. So I think that's why I connect with them. And most men, most men don't care to talk with you. Or they'll do it just to get in your pants, you know. And I just, he, it, he was one of the first ones to not want that, but still, but still actually care about me as a person. And I think because of all the guys that would grope on me throughout my life. All the guys that would harass me sexually in, in different ways. It meant a lot. It's something that it's hard to give up that. It's hard to give up on somebody that didn't use you in that way. When you're used to that, you guys have no idea. Unless you've been there. You have no idea how how demeaning it can be. How scary to be left alone with a man who you know. You know. Even when they go to take off their belt or whatever they do. It's, it's scary and I don't even like belts anymore because of all those, because of Randy, I don't even like belts. I don't wear them unless I absolutely have to because I just, I don't like the feeling and that was why I peed my pants once when when my dad was end up taking, well, all he did was touch his belt. I think he still used his hands on my butt to spank me. But because he had, um, because he had touched his belt, that brought me back to those moments. And it was so scary. I just, as a child, when you're, when you're beat or strangled or abused in any form, it's bad enough, you know, that would have traumatized me the rest of my life. But then all the other times on top of that, even after high school, I can't even say no anymore because I just know it's not going to do anything, you know. After you do it so many times, you kind of get a feel. If a man's going to do something, he's not going to care if you say no or not. And I guess that's what Chris represented. He was my escape. For my life, you know, it made me believe that I was worthy, that it wasn't just my, my body, it made me feel like my abuse was wrong, and, you know, 
and you cared through everything. So it was so hard. It was so hard when he started being mean to me. He broke my heart. The first time that the first time that he started being mean made me feel so small and like none of that mattered like everything that he had said to me he didn't ever mean and that's I think why I became as obsessed with him as I was on my part because I do agree I had some obsession as well, and I still might have some. Mine's different reason than his. Mine is just because I wanted him to validate what we were, you know? I wanted him to tell me, did he ever care? All those times we wrote back and forth, did he mean a word of what he said? I know I don't have my emails for proof. I used to have one email that I, I had and <laughs> I brought it everywhere with me. It was the last one of the last emails that was nice. That he cared about me and he wanted to know more about Isaac. And he, he wasn't mean. You know, he wasn't mean or didn't say mean things to me. He was, he was very, like, thoughtful and loving. And he always could cheer me up. And I think that's what I miss most. And I don't know, somewhere inside him, maybe he does care. And I just can't keep feeling like it's all my fault. I can't keep holding on to all on this guilt that I did something where I know I didn't. And I don't want him to hate me, but I also don't want this to keep happening. I wish that he could just be himself like he used to before I got married to Isaac and before I did my videos with Isaac. I, I just keep trying to think to myself, why? Why did he start hating me? The only thing I can think is he doesn't like Isaac, obviously. But I mean, before this, he was really nice. Even when we, me and Isaac just started dating, he was nice. I just don't know why he changed. And I just want to know. I just want validation and answers and he never feels like he has to give me anything. I'm sorry, that's our freaking, that's our din, -din people. And Isaac's burned things, I guess. I don't know. Is it burned? No, but it got crispy. Oh, great. We're having crispy pot pies, people. And I have my banana. No, I'm not doing those videos right now. <laughs> Isaac told me to keep it clean. But you want anything naughty, I do have my Flickr account. I just opened a new one. Because my old ones, I don't know. I don't know how to get into my old ones, so. It's been compromised. <laughs> no, someone just stole it and I don't have access to yeah, it. Yeah, well, that's what it is. Fuck you. He doesn't mean that. Well, not in the literal sense. <laughs> but to assert to you, Chris, if you are watching this, I just want you to know that I never meant to hurt you. And I know that a lot of things has been said and done between us. And maybe we'll never be back to that place we were in high school. And I'm fine with that. Get I understand. Her but um 
just know that I don't hate you, hate you. I don't even hate you. I, I have no... Honestly, if you were actually to care... And if we could actually put our differences aside, then I think we would actually get along. And I, I'm just fine with with your wife and your kids. I don't, I don't have any bad feelings. All I'm upset at is that you hurt me so badly. And you don't even care, and you never validate anything for me. And you always act like you, you don't have to. Because why we had only an online relationship, I get it, okay? I know that's all I was to you. And as long as it's online and you're anonymous, you think that it just shouldn't even matter. And I know you're probably some of the people on my stuff that I even confide in sometimes. I'm sure you are. And I always know it's you because there's nobody in the freaking world that's as detailed and as descriptive and as creative as you. Honestly, you are, if you use that energy and you focused it on storytelling or, or like art or something like positive, you would make such a difference in this world. And you would inspire so many people. You don't have to feel jealous of me or Isaac. I'm not anything comparatively. You have a lot of things in you. If you actually had the courage to share it, you have so much more than just your computer skills. Like, there's so much more to you. And you don't even see it. But other people do. And... I know you like that type because you always liked people that had creativity in them. You liked Jeanette and she's a she's now a photographer, she's a drawer, she does art. You liked Heidi, and she was in like choir and drama as well. You liked me and I was in drama and I love creative writing and I love acting. And you love Katie and she's into photography. So you know what? You like creative people. And that's one of the things I always knew about you. I always saw that creative spark in you. And I kind of wish that you had, you had always seen it. I think that was your only thing. You never saw stuff in you, but you would see it in other people. And you've told me that with different people that you've been. Not you, but other people. But the amount of stuff that you've set, created and all the stories and everything it's it's like it's so big time that most people don't believe me when I tell them so that's how I know that you have creativity in you that's how I know you have a lot in you but you could actually be something so you should use that energy to inspire and always remember that I'm still your friend and we don't have to be enemies and even Isaac can be learn to care about you. If we actually all just got along and put our differences aside. I'm sure you realize you have more in common than you think. Trust me, I know both of you pretty well. But I'm going to stop here and this, do soul searching and, and reach inside yourself. Oh, hey, let's know. There's somebody out there that cares. And I love you all.